we got some decks that came from the World Championship number 28 for Magic the Gathering. And they didn't take the just top of the top of the top decks. Instead, we get a plethora of decks. We're going to be covering one specific deck right here. This one by Nathan Stewart with a Grixis mid-range build. Really looking with Shieldred, the Apocalypse, Corpse Appraisers, Harvester, and Fable of the Mirror Breaker being the creature-centric part of the deck. And then got Bake Busters, Upbraids, and Cuts Downs. I really think that this is interesting. A little bit about Nathan Stewart, though. Nathan is one of the youngest members. He won both the 2021 MOCS Season 3 and 2022 MOCS Season 2. So he has a lot of experience when it comes to actually going all the way. Uh, really awesome up-and-coming Magic the Gathering player. I think that we're going to hear his name for a long time in the world of Magic the Gathering or maybe even just card games in general. Seems to be a very competent player altogether. Let's take a look at this deck and see what he's doing. And we're going to be doing something a little bit different this episode, mostly because we're going to be playing best of three. Because competitive Magic, you should always be playing best of three. I know in the arena we play best of one a lot of the times, but it's mostly because time constraints and the arena really favors those who play quickly, those who bust through matches very fast, and those who play best of one. You're going to get the most rewards and bang for your buck, but if you want to work at the highest level, best of three is the way to do it. And that gives us some interesting things that we could do with the sideboard. We could actually kind of hide good cards from our opponent, put them in on the second one and take the second one. And we could also, you know, hide things like negates, disdainful strokes, a couple of other things in here like Rona's vortexes. Some Atushis, Blazing Skies, and stuff like that. A couple of break Reckoners Bank Buster. So you're able to adjust after the first round. You can see what your opponent's playing. You can play out your base stack, right? And you adjust to your opponent in the interim between games, right? But let's look at the main deck. We got four Fable of the Mirror Breakers. No surprise to see one of the best cards one of the best red cards in standard right now. We've got a couple of bank busters here for draw power. Shieldred. What deck isn't running Shieldred? That's running black in the top decks. That will be interesting to see, actually. Invoke Despair's another one of my favorite cards. If I'm running black, I'm running both of these guys. If I'm running Rakdos, I'm running all three of these. What else do we have in here? Blood Tithe Harvester. This guy's everywhere. We know he's good. We know he is wonderful. Fantastic card. A couple of Re Reckoners Bank Busters, mostly to draw cards. Maybe get some aggro swings in whenever you play a Shouldred on turn four. Power up the Bank Buster, swing in. Some nice little things that we could do there. Lily, definitely going to be able to get rid of some creatures on the field. Uh, gets the opponent discarding cards, this and that, to make this appears early, kind of tempo, removal, infernal grasps, kills things whenever they hit the board, a couple of abrades to probably go after artifacts, that's probably most of why this abrade is in here, a couple of duresses to get some knowledge of your opponent's hand, and some cut downs for some early game tempo kills on some of the opponent's creatures. So I'm really excited to see how this does. We know that this deck wins. If we're losing with this deck, it means that we are playing it incorrectly to a degree or we're just getting bad matchups or the shuffler hates everybody. We, we could definitely see that the shuffler really does hate everybody, but I am going to put myself on the line and go in with this exact build and see what we could do in best of three. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. 
If you are returning, thank you so much for your support. It has been wonderful watching this channel grow, and I really, really appreciate each and every one of you out there. It has been quite the wild journey. Make sure if you are new here and you like the stuff, like and subscribe. If not, no pressure. You know, it is free though, but but no pressure. Let's get into some matches and uh, see uh, what, what, what made this deck special. What made this deck tick. All right, we are going to S the play first. No blue mana. But we do get children in the hand. We do get a lily in hand. We got fable, some of the uh, best cards. So we don't have the blue for the make this appear, but we have other things we can be doing. Okay. Come out with the springs. Make them think we have something up. Looks like, hopefully this is not mono blue. Well, hopefully this is mono blue. He plays a black. Yeah. Get Fable out. There was no stick at all, so he doesn't have a counter non-creature spell. Oh! He's going to pay two life to get it off of the field. That is A-OK -okay with me. Dinnick. Disgusting card. Discard up to two cards. This? I think that's all we want to discard. Drew more land anyway, right? Respawn with Lily. Those who get in my yes, he can play that Dinnick next turn. <laughs> Off you go. But we're making it a point that we're not laying down. He answers with a Kaido. I won't let Kamigawa Have a good counter for Kaido. Children kind of counter Kaido. Like right away, right? Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make him discard. We're going to discard the lounge. And then we're going to play the Kaido. Passing turn back to the opponent. Now, do you want to draw cards? Are you sure you want to draw cards? Yep. That hits you for two. Oh no, don't remove him. Should have waited to have the mana base. So got some decent damage off on the opponent. A circle of confinement. Disgusting. Swings in. And now he could draw cards. There's no secret I can't uncover. So that puts him at he's pretty dangerous right now. I'll play Fable. Pings me for a damage. And do we want a plus on the lily or not? Maybe we're getting that ninja off of the field. Fine. I'll take my and only because he won't be able to hit me and draw a card. And now if he plays this uh, Dinnick from the graveyard, it costs four. Uh, he has a two now. It's going to create another dump, or, um, ninja. We're looking at that. Am I really worried about that? Yeah, I am. No, because his disturbed is what it makes him really powerful. Let's let him land, I think. 
There's a Kaito. And now we can make this appear. Harvester again. I'm going to actually submit zero here. And yes, we're going to be taking damage here. But it also gives us blood. There's turn one. Black mana. There's the Dinnick. We take a damage. Hmm. Okay, so we want to start getting in on him. Right? And I can see a couple of ways of doing that. I think... We pop the Dinnick. He gets to investigate. He has no cards in hand. I'm not sure what the stick is unless the investigate is the stick, which he could go down and try to get something. But not good enough. And now, we Infernal Grasp the Judge. Swings. Yep, goes down to nine. We are not out of the woods yet. This Sinner's Judgment is probably going to be put on us right now. And it is. Corpse Appraiser. Okay. I'm going to copy the Harvester. Swing. That's six, seven, eight. I would say I'm going to go look for an Invoke Despair, but we could do that next turn. We're really hoping he doesn't have a board wipe. Yeah. He's out. Alright. That went well, but what did he have? He was playing... Some pretty typical white pieces. He had a Kaido Suzuki. Maybe we play our own Kaido? Do we need much more removal? I don't think so. Maybe we pop a negate in there. And I want that guy in there. Nah, these can handle Dinnick. This a Berade seems a little bit weaker. But we want that negate in there mostly because he, if he puts Sinner's Judgment on us or something of that sort, we want that. Maybe it gets rid of a Kaido. We play a Kaido of our own. Maybe get rid of a Corpse Appraiser. And do we want more Bank Busters? That's the real question. What? Do we feel like we were behind on lands? I think so. Maybe go down one more Corpse Appraiser. Something like this. A lot of his stuff had disturbed. So. Maybe getting things out of the graveyard isn't the easiest thing to do in this matchup. We'll see how this does. We will see how this does. And this is a second match against Striffer the Fallen. All right. What are the chances we draw on tap land like this? Yeah, we are gonna have all three, but what are we doing turn two? Not much, right? 
I, I hate to do it, but we're going to mulligan. This is certainly interesting. Put the Infernal Grasp on bottom? Or should we put... Nah, I don't want to put Duress on bottom. Though I didn't see any Planeswalkers or anything like that. We're going to put Duress on the bottom. Alright, first land. Xander's Lounge. We're going to go Shivan Reef into Bank Buster, probably. Or should we hold up make this appear? Nah. Nah. We want that bank buster in so we could draw cards at any point. We're behind on lands. He didn't do anything, which is great. I will in turn go back to him, see what he has. Land. That's his fourth land. Okay, we will draw a card. A Sulphurous Springs. Now, do we want to Shieldred? He might have put some counters in here. It's weird that he hasn't done anything, so I'm going to pass back. I want him to dedicate something. Okay. Here's the thing. If he counters us, no big deal. Right? We take the ping, and yes, there's a stick. There we go. We got rid of a counter in his hand. Man, was he a uh, control deck the whole time? Yeah, put his Anders Lounge down. And now we go Shieldred. We have a second children now. Essence scatter. All right. Land. <laughs> a third children. Huh. Try it again. It sticks. Crew. Crew it up. Is this a murder? This looks like a time to murder. Oh wait, he'll just pay the two. Heh. Well, I guess we're letting go of another children. But we could swing in for four here. Unless he's doing it again. He is. Yeah, just this one. Swing. Puts the opponent to 14. Opponent still has 5 cards. Now 4. <clears throat> but he's only got 2 mana left. What are the chances are it's a Essence Scatter? He is running Essence Scatters in here. Hmm. I think I gotta try to pump him out, right? No, don't be greedy. I think we can wait till next turn and then invoke Despair. But that allows him to draw one more card, so I'm going to actually try to kill this ninja. We killed the ninja. Just fine. Man, am I being too greedy by wanting to play the Shieldred right now, or is that the right move? We're up one nothing in the matchup. Alright. Crew. Tap the Shieldred. Doesn't have white, so I don't mind tapping my creatures. Okay. Goes down to eight. Thanks. I'll be taking that. 
Yep, takes more damage. There's white. He finally got to his white. This is probably a handful of white stuff. How much you want to bet? We cannot make this appear. He can to ferry though. Certainly is interesting. Put in the hours. Okay, look at the top three cards. Yeah, haven't seen much of the ferry lately. Right? It is a good card. Maybe in best of three, it's a lot better. Play a couple rounds of best of three and uh, look who comes up. But uh, Teferi, who sows, who slows the sunset, right? Slows the sunset. Circle of confinement? Why did you circle? Did you not know? You didn't know, did you? He is out of mana too. Which is very interesting indeed. Let's go ahead and kill him. Swing in. Ignore this stuff here. It is just noise. And then invoke despair. He should go down to two. There's a sack. And it doesn't matter, man. It really doesn't matter. As soon as you draw a card, you're dead. Kaido goes away. I gain two life for drawing a land, it looks like. We'll go to the opponent's turn, and he loses two life, and that's it. See you later. Sayonara. Hasta la vista. Okay. Nice little rank up there. Let's go ahead and get into our second match. Played a couple, and uh, they weren't interesting matches, so uh, decided to... Uh, do it again and see if we can get something actually interesting. Good, we are in best of three. Okay, got a Xander's Lounge. Plenty of land. Harvester, Infernal Grasp, and Fable. Got a couple of things we can do. It's not too embarrassing to keep, so uh, we will keep it. All right. Dragon Spark Reactor. Wow, that is a little bit awkward in best of three, I do believe. It's gonna throw something easy to kill down on the ground, I could imagine. Oh, Vampire's Kiss. Did not expect that. That's a really good card for a Dragon Spark Reactor deck. Interesting. Maybe we respond with uh, Fable. But then that leaves us susceptible out on the field. Maybe I'm supposed to slow play this. But I think I will try to resolve a Fable and try to get some mana on the field. We could maybe deal with this. If we get in a raid, we could deal with that. Voltic Surge immediately on the Goblin. And there's a Braids. Interesting. We gotta get rid of that now. Okay, do we want to discard? That is the question. I think so. I think we need to get rid of these Fables here. Okay, we got a Duress. I don't mind that at all. But we could also Infernal Grasp on the Braids does not have a way to respond which is great now i kind of want to take a look at that hand he's got three cards left so he could do some things lagamos all right we're gonna have to target that with our uh, cut down here and the rest of it is just land so i'm guessing he's gonna play the lagamos now it enters the battlefield and i cut down Yep, get it out of here. Get it gone. Man. 
We are drawing the land that we need, but my god. It would be awfully nice to draw a couple of creatures. Now, here's the thing. We don't really have anything in the graveyard we can get with Takanuma. But maybe if we milled, we would get there. It's always a chance. But I, I kind of want to get the Harvester down. Maybe discard the Reef with the blood. Yeah. We could always copy the Harvester with Kiki-Jiki. If he doesn't blow it up, which I think he will blow it up. Okay. Lots of stuff. Lots of Perox. And he wants to move to my turn. And I think now is a time where... We want to discard the Shivan Reef. That could be greedy. We might have been supposed to sacrifice a Blood Tithe Harvester to kill the the Face Breaker. But let's copy Blood Tithe Harvester. There he is. And then we're going to swing in. He does not block. I think we channel here. We about got to find something, right? We got ourselves a lily. Perfect. That is kind of the perfect draw. Okay. What did you draw, opponent? Are you going to kill the reflections? You are. Yes. We go down to 10. Opponent plays a Blood Tithe Harvester of his own. And Lily is not going to do much here. Like, at all. I don't think we're sticking in this one too long. But I know what we need to do. Should I show the opponent any more things? I believe not. Well, let's go ahead and get into game two. And we gotta make some massive changes to this. We need two more braids. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of one of these infernal grass and we're gonna also get rid of that lily we don't need that in this matchup it's not great for what we're dealing with in this and uh hmm do we want a bank buster we got plenty to remove things rona's vortex might be a way to go i'm gonna put a couple in here and get rid of one mirror breaker and oh what else Hmm. Let's push one cut down away as well. And I think this is going to work a little bit better in our favor in this particular matchup. Our braids are definitely going to be super important to get rid of those artifacts that are hitting the board. And of course, we got a lot of removal. Vortex picks up uh, tokens pretty easily, pretty nicely. Let's go. And, of course, opponent was already sitting and waiting for us. We're going to play first. Oh, what a terrible hand. Got to get rid of that. And another terrible hand. Oh, man. This might just be a... You lose based off of cards hating you. But he did come out with a tapped land there, which gives me a little bit of hope. And we'll auto pay. We'll put this guy out on the field. Get some blood rolling. We know what we're looking at with his deck, though. And a break. 
know what? That is acceptable. And we get to push out of Reckoner's Bank Buster. We're not in too bad of a position. We're low on cards. We already lost a Harvester. Oh. Okay. Discarding the Takanuma. Getting a Corpse Appraiser? That's not going to help us here. Now, I could go ahead and kill this. We don't want that really doing much. But let's see what the opponent has in store for us. Is this the one that you could get out of the graveyard? Don't think so. Face breaker. I don't want the face breaker on the field more than I don't want the blood caster. I think I don't know. This is hard. Maybe I should have made this appear right there. Get rid of it. Okay. Drawing a card off of the bank buster. And drawing another card. Wow. Mana, 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 mana. Get the Corpse Appraiser out. Get rid of the Face Breaker. Get a Cut Down in hand. That worked out perfectly. Alright, no use to do that on our turn. Let's see if he tries a cast. We'll let that go through. I'm not afraid of that. Tapped land. It looks like our opponent is a first main phase kind of player. Now I'm going to make this appear on that. We don't want him digging out his cards. We don't want to have to kill him twice. These artifact decks tend to blow up a little bit. Eaten alive. This is acceptable. It seems like it was like something that he was going to do anyway. And he just went ahead with it. Okay. Fortunately, we don't have anything we really want to be doing right now. Not with what we're given. And he is down to, what, uh, one card in hand? The good thing about this deck that um, we're playing is that it does have what seems like fuel for days. And yes, we're seeing a lot of that with the opponent right now. That constant reaction with the reactor. <clears throat> that constant interaction with the Oni Cult Anvil. But I don't think I want to discard. Swing. We get the treasure. We're going to cut down. And then we're going to Corpse Appraiser. Get rid of the Bloodcaster. And we're going to grab the Abrade. This is instant speed. But he's tapped out right now. Destroy Artifact. That. Auto Pay. He's tapped out, so he can't do anything about that. And that's it. Nice little easy turn. Okay. Creating a 1-1. One, one. Draws a card off of the blood. What did you get? He's not going to reveal it, which means probably land. Move to attacks and swing. Now he's going to use the Oni Coat Anvil. 
to sacrifice a construct and ping me four damage here. It's fine. I like it. I enjoy the pain. I still get two damage off and uh, respawn with a Blood Tithe Harvester and go ahead and end the turn. We are looking good. Any more creatures in Graveyard? No. Alright. Gets his Construct. Gets another card. Gets a Braids. Very interesting. We don't want him drawing cards. Yeah. He sacks that. I sack a mana. And before my turn starts, I'm going to Reckoner Bank Buster to draw a card. I am then going to actually pop my blood to discard that Xander's Lounge. Draws ourselves another card, and that is just a beautiful. Yeah. So, here is the thing. Copy the Blood Tithe Harvester. We get ourselves a blood. Up, 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 up. Next. Next. I want to draw a card off of the Reckoner Bank Buster if we're given that opportunity. Corpse Appraiser already did his job. The Gabo already did his job of giving, giving me massive land advantage. Let's see what we have here. We get a block right there which is beautiful. He's going to sack it, ping us for damage. He gains one life. He does not get another one, which is great because then we could just hit him in the face with an Invoke Despair. Gets rid of that Braids, draws us two cards, pings him for four, and we might as well get this out on the field. We can still draw a card off of the Bank Buster here. And we're at nine. It's a little bit scary. We're at seven. So we've got to be a little bit fast here. A little bit fast. Pops the blood. Uh, these guys are going to get really annoying really fast. More mana. Okay. And we're actually going to draw a card with the two um, mana here. Drawing into Mirror Breaker. A Braid. Yes, sir. We're going to start this off with a Braiding. Uh-oh, not that one. We want the other side of that. Destroy Target Artifact. Yep. Go ahead and get your last ping off. What else? What else? What else? We have two, four, five mana left. So we could honestly do Fable and this. Or we could do Corpse Appraiser. Don't think he has any creatures in the graveyard. No, we've done a really good job clearing it out. All right, he's out. We're going to round three. Where did I feel weaknesses were? Maybe two negates go down one make disappear. And we want another blue card to move out. Rona's Vortex. The negates could get those artifacts before they hit the field as well. Mana, like always, is a little bit weird. It's really weird right now in standard with mana.
All right. Had to give a little cough. Had to put it on mute for a second. But we'll start off with the Xander's Lounge. Okay, okay. Reactor already. Seems like a reactor every single time. It's pretty impressive. A blood fountain. He gets it onto the field as well. Okay. He destroys my bank buster. That is awfully rude. Now, should I hold negate? Or should I play the uh, blood tithe harvester? I think we're holding negate. And of course, cut down. There we go. That's it. Gets him off the field. We did not draw land, though. Man, oh man. I think we just end again. We don't need to be putting pressure on the field right now. Okay. Is this whenever he swings... Whenever one or more creatures deals combat damage to a player so we have a little bit of time there he hasn't done the combat damage yet man I, I think we're getting really unlucky with uh, our land we are way behind in land at this point like he only has four but with him only having four lands like his deck is really cheap I think professional, professional Facebreaker might be among the more expensive things, but we're actually able to play around it fairly decently. We'll make this appear. Alright. Oh my god. No land. But we can Corpse Appraiser here. Yes. And get rid of one of these uh, face breakers. A lounge, probably. We were actually able to get to land. Incredible. It took a while. It took a minute to get our fourth land, but we got there. Only coat anvil, as you do. Infernal grasp, as you do. Uh huh. We cannot corpse appraiser and duress, but I might be able to get a another land here. Get rid of that guy and look at that low and behold, behold, behold. We have our, another marsh, and now we can hold up negates. A braid would be so much better here. Negate. You don't get that much value. I am sorry. One, two, one, two, three, four, and a five. We draw some cards with Evoke Despair, deal some damage, get rid of a creature. I think that that's going to be our best move. But we're going to swing first. We want him to block with uh, this construct. Which he probably will. He does not. So he does it smartly. But the shuffler is making us fight to get lands. So we did not get a land. All right. Perfect. But, honestly, we can still do some things. He wasn't able to get anything off of that blood fountain. So that's that's good. That is a start. Okay. Go to swings. Blocks. Negative. Well, we're going to invoke despair anyway. Remember now, this deck was 
what was it, 23rd, 33rd? Something. I'm actually recording this the day after I started this audio. Just because I thought it was fair to give you guys a good match. And uh, this one is definitely fitting the fold. And he has a mountain in hand. It is a shame that uh, we didn't hit anything with our duress. But we do know that his hand is not good. The Lagamos is good. And uh, we might be in a little bit of trouble here. No, we aren't. We're not in trouble. What kind of talk is that? He's... Oh, wait, we are in trouble. Because that Dragon Spark reactor might actually pop. But here's the thing. That's seven. Okay, we are in trouble. But if he can't kill me this turn, I think I win. We are not going to block. No. Oh, oh, oh. I screwed up. I screwed up. Good game. Uh, that one was on me. I'll go into another match. That was on me. We are given the option. We are definitely going to play first. And our mana is sketchy. Let's get the Triome out past her. See what our opponent can do. Triome as well. Unfortunately, we did not draw mana. So we'll pay, play a tapped marsh. Dog. Hmm. We got green, white, red. We're not able to drag mana out of our library, so let's actually take a look at what the opponent is doing. I don't mind taking one. Yeah, this guy takes the guys from the graveyard. Jaxus, welcoming vampire. We might be in a little bit of trouble. Get rid of the fable for now, I believe. He seems like he could get stuck on land as well. And it looks like that is indeed the case. Nope. <laughs> of course not. Alright, we, we did get our third land. Okay, here we go. Fable. Yeah. Um. Why? Hmm. No. You're good. Welcoming Vampire comes out. And we get a Triome. So as far as discards card go, he's going to have a lot of creatures. So we discard the Lily. We want to be getting rid of the correct creatures. Let's Infernal Grasp. Hit the Vampire. Then swing in for two. Create a treasure. He blocks with a companion. We put a Triome out? What do we do Sulphur Springs into Blood Tithe Harvester? Yeah, I'm fairly comfortable with that decision. We get the Fable of the Mirror Breaker Harvester kind of combination. Specialist. Okay. Gets the dog back. And we're going to pass back to me. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Back to back invokes. Could really make this game go real smoothly. Yep, auto pay. Probably sacking a dog. Yep, that's the exact dog I thought he would. We only get to draw two here. Swing him with the goblin. He actually takes the block. Now we got a clear field for invoke, invoke. Pretty good stuff. Gets another card out of this. And now he's got two to sacrifice to this next invoke. But next turn we clear the field. We uh, are able to cop copy the harvester. I don't care about holding up that make disappear yet. Yeah. Okay. Now, we're going to copy the Harvester. We create another blood. Then we minus on our fake Harvester. Kill the Specialist, or I should say token. He's not a fake. He's just a token. And then we pass turn. Really solid so far. Really solid. Welcoming vampire. We do not have a make this appear up. But we do have another invoke despair next turn. That's going to make it a little bit more difficult to pull off. Mana, mana, mana. No. Okay. Okay. So what we can do is I kind of want to do this. I'm not re really worried about that halo fountain. If he can't really do anything with it, swing in for five. He goes down to nine. He's going to lose health with the shieldred. Haven't seen much in the way of removal from the opponent. Cabaretti Courtyard. He gets a force out, gains a life. I don't think that's good enough for him, though. He's got five, so he could put AO out. He does not. Okay. Copying the Harvester. Moving to attacks, where we will attack with everything. Wandering Emperor. Well, we're going to make it disappear. Oops. Oops, opponent. Blocking the four. Goes down to two. And, um... Let's actually pass. That's it. All right. We're going to go mid game here. Do we want to do anything? Maybe another cut down and one less duress. Uh, but other than that, I'm fairly comfortable with what we have. I'm going to be right back. I have to go let the dog in. Got a new dog, by the way. Brand new doggy. And I want to thank the opponent for being patient with us real quick while we went to grab the dog. Opponent's still sideboarding, so... Looks like we got back just in time. All right, one mana. You gotta be out of your mind, Mulligan. All right, Bank Buster, make disappear. Corpse Appraiser. Of 
We need that blue. But getting rid of a black seems like a bad move. So I'll put a Shivan Reef to the bottom. Lead off with a ridge. Cabaretti Courtyard. Real slow. Real, real slow. Okay, we're going to have to come up with another tap land. So I really can't say much because we're moving really slow as well with our land base. And we get a Gala Greeters. Hmm. Four cards left for the opponent. I don't think he has much draw power. So I think we cut down. Get rid of the Gala Greeters. And then hold up Make Disappear. Because if I can make him run out of cards, run out of things to do, then we're sitting pretty good here. Yep. Mega disappear. Cool. Then get the Triome down into Corpse Appraiser. Get rid of the Specialist. Grabbing a... Probably another... Uh, let's grab Infernal Grass so we can hit more things. We'll have to pay one more, but... I mean, it is what it is. Welcoming Vampire does hit the field, but does not get its proc. Let's see if he blocks it. No. If that's the case, then we go ahead and kill it anyway. See, playing best of three, you get to really see what your opponent's doing. And uh, he was able to get around that. Maybe he added those Tamiyo safekeepings from his uh, sideboard there. Good deal. Halo Fountain comes out. Swings in with a vampire. We need a mana. Would be really nice to draw a mana. Uh-huh. Let me hurt him for having the welcoming vampire out as well as a fountain. Ooh, we do get... Okay. Huh. So a couple of different things can happen, right? Crew. Swing in. Does he block it? He does. If that's the case, I'm going to invoke despair. All right. Got some land too. That's been a bit of a bit of a soft spot getting the lands that we need. Okay. So, it is my humble opinion that we shieldred here. Don't see blue. Then we're going to crew the Bank Buster with the Shouldred. Oh, wow. All right. All right. That's a good move. That is definitely a good move. And we'll pretend to hold up uh, something. Anything. Ah, mana. Mana. Well, I guess we could draw a card. You don't see Fateful Absence that much anymore. It's really quite a shame. It's really nice to draw cards. Huh. So do we want a Corpse Appraiser? Dude, I think we, uh... I think we go ahead and Fable here. And we only got four mana left, so we cannot draw cards and Infernal Grasp and Corpse Appraiser. We either have to choose either Corpse Appraiser or Killer Creature and Bank Buster. 
I think that that is stronger, though he didn't play anything. So we'll just draw a card. Move on to my turn. Another Corpse Appraiser. Do I want to discard anything? I think these two? Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's game. That is game. He does eat John Drew. Or eat John Joe. Right? We still swing in. We still do some damage. And then we invoke despair. And he dies. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Let's go on. Let's get into a post game wrap. And uh, let's see an evaluation of the deck. Nathan Stewart's deck is phenomenal, especially in best of three, where you could really utilize the sideboard and kind of make it what it should be, right? Like if, if you're lacking um, a braids, which we saw earlier, we could put more braids in. We can make move some make this peers out or some duresses out, right? But the back end of this deck is just a brutal with Invoke Despair and Shieldred. You have the Fable and the Blood Tithe Harvester. The only game that I've lost with this deck, and I played this a lot of times. One of those losses is the, the loss is actually showcased in the video. And as you can see, I could have probably won that game at one health, but I got the order of blocks mixed up. It was completely 100% my fault that we lost that round. 100% my fault. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're playing in gold, so we expect to win with a deck like this. But overall, this deck did not have many weaknesses. We were going up against some big decks. We were going up against some big decks. It is really about what order you're playing things in. It is a deck that has only 11 creatures and 23 non-creatures. You're playing a very control-centric deck with some fast aggro creatures that could get onto the field and really do some damage to your opponent. But your main strength is going to come from your draw power, your make disappears, hitting good targets with them, infernal grass cut downs, hitting good targets with those, your braids to try to get some artifacts off of the field, your harvesters to get the value with the or, uh, fable of the mirror breaker, and then shieldred and invoke despair to shut the door on your opponent on the way out. This deck operated very well. I didn't see many weaknesses with this deck at all maybe aggro decks would be a weakness uh, maybe even throw in something that would uh you know destroy all creatures that's black get rid of some of those aggro threats but i mean you have enough cut downs infernal grasps duresses and make disappears to really disrupt aggro in the beginning of the game even like this deck was the deck that wanted all at Magic 28. Nathan Stewer put this deck together and uh, I really had a lot of fun playing this and I'm glad that Wizards of the Coast put this particular build in the arena. Once again, thank you for joining. Make sure that you have liked and subscribed and if you like this video in particular, we might go through and play a lot of these decks over the next few weeks to see how they play what they're supposed to be doing and uh give a nice little judgment call on them all right i am out of words for today thank you for joining bye